guys! Welcome back to the Spring Fever Knit Along. This is part five and the last section. This is it. We're almost finished. Are you Yay. excited? Yes. yes. <laughs> I want to wear them. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Spring will Before be here it, and gone. I know. Before it's gone. Yeah. Yes. The tulips are up. I really love how these stripes are coming out and I think I'm going to make knit a matching hat. <gasps> a matching I hat. Have, I love that. Yes. I have mm. some uh, I can yarn left. So yeah. I you love all the yarn stripes. Left. Yeah, the shepherd's wool is is really big skeins of yarn. Yeah. So in this section, we are going to work on the decreasing on the top of the mitten. And it's a little different. I decided to try something different, mm -hmm. new. Yeah. Yeah, so it is, um, I actually have one all finished, oh, ready to go. Yeah, so it That's is. That's cute. It's decreased at four points. Two four more. points yeah. instead of two. Well, well, okay, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four points because then you get this. You get that what that oh, wide. Oh, yeah. Stripe, okay. Wide flat stripe. Stripe. Yeah. And you will yeah, be able to yeah. see it more on mine because it's just a solid. It's a solid. Yeah. 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 And I think I'm the only so, one that has the solid color. But I didn't want to. I didn't want a kitchener because traditionally when you decrease <gasps> like this, yes, you you then end up with like a flat top. Across, Thank you. And you have to kitchener. <laughs> Yeah. And I was like, Mom, we don't want a kitchener. No. So, so there's two sections of decreases in the pattern, and they all the sizes start out decreasing the same. Okay. Which is every other row. Mm -hmm. So you're going to decrease about half your stitches every other row. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to switch to, there's sections for each size. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to be dec decreasing every row to, to make more of a rounded top. Oh, and then you, good. Yeah. Yeah. Did Isn't you make that up? I did, kind of, yeah. You should try it on a toe sock, or a sock toe. A sock toe, yeah. Oh, yeah. that'd be nice. Mm. Anyway, so you're um, you're left with six stitches at the end. And then oh, you just I do love that. A traditional like mitten, or you mm -hmm. just thread the yarn through and pull it tight, and voila, mm -hmm. it's nice and round. Sounds no good. Kitchener. Sounds yeah. good to me. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I might incorporate but that I do in think my sock. Should try that for a sock. Yeah. I think that'd be really nice. I think so. Even toe up socks, you could cast on. Oh, maybe we're gonna write a sock pattern. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm hmm Okay. So, everybody's ready to decrease? You yeah. You're doing now. Yeah. Okay. We're okay. ready. All right. Let's show you how to do that. All right, guys. We are ready to start decreasing the top of the mitten. Almost there. So exciting. So, to make things easier, I have half the stitches on one needle and then a quarter and a quarter. And especially when you're knitting this kind of top uh, where you're going to be decreasing uh, on one side and then decreasing on the other side, I find this really helpful to have it divided like this. If that doesn't make sense to you, that's okay. It turns out the same either way you knit it. So there is two sections of the decreases. The first section is going in its directions for all sizes. And we're going to be decreasing every other row. We're going to decrease about half the stitches. And then um, the second section, it goes by size. And then we're going to be decreasing every row to get a nice rounded top there. So let's go ahead and get started with this. We're going to knit our two stitches. And then we are going to SSK, which is slip, slip, slip them back over and then knit that way because we want these decreases to be pointing in toward the center of the mitten. Then we are going to knit for a size medium, we are going to knit 12. So that was two, three, four, five, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then this is just a knit two together over here. And then we have two stitches left. And then we're going to repeat that on the other side. So let's do our knit two over here. and then our SSK, just slip those, slip them back the other way, and then knit those two together. And then we're going to knit our 12, 2, 
three, four, five, six. decrease row down. So we are going to do row three is a decrease, row five is a decrease. So we're going to do two more decrease rows with a row of just knitting plain around without any decreases. Let's do that one here. is done with round two and now we are ready for round three so we are just going to do the same thing as we did on round one we're going to knit these two stitches and then we're going to ssk and you will notice that it is lined up on top of this last previous ssk are going to knit across and this time it's going to be 10. Because we have less stitches on this row than last time. And then we are going to knit these two together and knit two. We're done with that side more yarn and we're going to start on the second side is just the same way except you're going to be having less stitches in between here all right we have decreased our three decrease rows and we are ready to move on to the second section of decreasing so make sure you find the section that is appropriate to the size that you're knitting so that you can uh, have the correct stitch count it's basically the same thing we're still going to be knitting the two stitches and then we're going to be doing the SSK. But for this section, we are going to be decreasing every single row. And that's going to give it that really nice, nice uh, rounded shape at the top. All right. The rows are also getting smaller, so that's nice. Goes quicker. Going to start row eight. 
and it's just like you've been knitting before. The Knit 2 and then the SSK. So these are all pretty easy rows once you have it all figured out. We are getting down there. Got the last couple of stitches in between here. <clears throat> this decrease row is going to make our decreases meet. And then we just have one more row. Okay, our last row should have about uh, should have about 12 stitches on there and this last row is just knit two together all the way around. And then we will have six stitches. here so that he can be knit together with this guy over here two together Oop. last one knit two together and we've got six stitches left now we're finished we're just ready to sew in all those ends and you can be wearing them now we are on to the very, very last step, but it's a very important step, weaving in all these ends. So the first one we're gonna start with is the top here. Let's get this yarn on our needle. And then we are going to do just like we did with the thumb, where we are going to put all of these onto the yarn. Okay, that is done. Then we're gonna pull this up tight. What are they doing here? There we go. And then I like to see what we got here. Go through one of these loops here and make a little knot. Just like that. And then snug it up as snug as you can. That looks good. And then we are just going to weave in this end. And this can all be done from the right side. Going to go under, kind of diagonal like this. So then we are going to go, we've got an increase in the way, or a decrease I should say. Just going to weave it in for about an inch. Make sure everything looks good, and that one is done. Now, we are going to work on the thumb. So, here's all of our strings. So, 
first of all, we will... All right, we are gonna work on the thumb now. So, let's see here. Which ones are those? Oh, well, we have this one to do. So let's get this one out of the way. So on the back side, I also like to go to Agno. And this time you can just go under the pearl bump, just like that, just diagonally. If it's not a straight diagonal, that's okay. Go this way. Sometimes I even like to double back and or zigzag back the other way. Just like that. There we go. That should hold it. And then always make sure that you kind of stretch it out a little bit. You don't want it to be too tight. And then once it stretches, because knit is always going to stretch, you don't want that to be too short and pop out. Okay, so now we are on to this one here, the thumb joining. And we've got three colors. Let's start with the red. Get this guy on the needle. Then we are going to, I think I'm just going to tighten this one up because we can use the ends of the other two to kind of get that hole there. We can sew that up pretty quick with one of these other ends. So this one, I'm just going to neaten that edge up there, kind of mimicking some uh, pearl bumps there. And then just to make sure that nothing comes undone, I'm gonna do a quick little knot here and then do our diagonal again. Going through these. I'm gonna try and make this one all in one run this time. We're aiming for about an inch, maybe an inch and a half. Kind of all just depends on what you're feeling. Stretch it out a little bit. Yep, I think that one's good. Gotta remember to quit clunk in my scissors. Okay, we will go to the next one here. And this is the one that I'm gonna try and close this up a little bit. Just weave it in a little bit this way and that way to pull, pull in the edges of that hole and fill that in. I think that looks good because then we can take this one here and fill in that little tiny hole right there. Going to sew another knot right there. Just trying to figure out which way the knot is going to lie flattest, and I think it is this way. So let's try and go this way. I don't want to be going in with orange into the purple. That's definitely going to stand out. So we'll zag back this way. And. Here we go. There we are. Okay, now for this one here. Gonna just finish up that hole there. Oh, that clock. Oh, that looks good. Okay, I think we'll leave it right there. Make another knot. And this time, since this is the purpley blue, we're gonna be going up into the purpley blue. Let's turn it around this way. Just going diagonal. Making sure you're not catching any of the front knit stitches just under the pearl bumps. Smooth that out. 
All right, we have the thumb. Let's see how that looks on the right side. Make sure we don't have any holes there. Yeah, that looks really good. Okay, two more ends, guys, and then we are done. And these are gonna be super easy because we can just thread them through the cuff, especially this color here. It's already knotted off when we join those two colors. So I'm just going to find the space in between the two layers and then pull it through like that. I think I'm even gonna do that with this orange. I think it, the cuff is so thick that no one is ever gonna see any glimpse of orange. We'll just go through under here and then find those layers. You can kind of feel with your needle that you're not, you're between the two layers and you're not catching on anything. That's how you know you're between the two layers and not like poking out the front or anything. And that should do it. We have all the ends sewn in. There she is, all done. Now you are officially complete. Yeah. Who guys weren't paying attention? We need to pay attention to these details. Okay. Did you finish them, guys? Mm. Aren't they so cute? <laughs> That's okay if you didn't finish them. I'm sure you're really, really close. Keep on knitting. You're almost there. Yay. Yay. <laughs> They're so fun. <laughs> They're so fun. I love these stripies. So I yours, love mine. Do you? They came out really think. cute. Yeah. Really cute. They did. Yes, yours are very nice and cute. They did. That's a nice long cuff for you. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. mm. That's very cute. Here, show what you, uh... <laughs> it's the Kissner stitch. <laughs> it Let me see that. It turns out interesting. Oh, it did. It doesn't look very tidy. <laughs> no, mm, well... No. no. Maybe you didn't... And I think I, think I wanted loose. my cuff longer. Yeah, a little yeah, bit longer. Yeah, a little bit longer. I almost felt like mine came out too long, but... Oh. Okay. Short wrist. <laughs> huh. <laughs> the first pair is the trial run, right? And then you the first the pattern. pattern. Mm -hmm. Just the trial there one. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. Very cute. Oh, happy. These are happy. I know. Spring. They are. These are Easter colors. These are Easter egg dyed color. colors. Oh. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. they are. Mm -hmm. I might have to go dye some eggs. Oh. <laughs> I have tons of yarn left, a little bit less than the purple. These are oh. really big skeins. <clears throat> so I'm mm -hmm. making a hat. Yes. A hat mm. to match. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, did. I love matching sets. I didn't Ooh. weigh it, but I should you weigh have, it. You have quite a bit left. Yeah. yeah. yeah Here's mine. Good size. Left. I don't have too much left. Mm -hmm. Do you have but, a little? But if, if, you I, have two but if more, I didn't. Oh, right. You've got I little do. baby balls here, too. I do. If I wanted to make a large mitten, I would have plenty. Mm. Yeah. Plenty for the large. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the large is only, it's only a couple more stitches. Mm -hmm. It's four, what, four, four more, more stitches wide. Four yeah. more stitches. Yeah. And this what do you is... Do with this? I don't know. <gasps> I do know. Are really cute. <gasps> I do Look know. I am going to take a tape measure, plastic tape measure, and oh. crochet... Make a cover? Make a cover for it. Mm -hmm. I've been wanting to do that. That's fun. That'd be fun. Okay, the Freya is 217 yards, and I. Yeah, it's only plenty. 75 grams. It's 75 grams. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And when I weighed, I didn't weigh these mittens, but I weighed the crazy wool mittens, and they were about 25 grams each. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> 25 grams. Well, guys, I hope hmm. you had a ton of fun knitting along with us. We certainly had fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we did. Mittens are so fun to knit. They are. So we will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.